Good morning. A very warm welcome to you all and welcome to those watching online. Just a few notices before we start our service. Uh, if you look on your service sheet, they're, they're listed there as well. So this coming Tuesday from 12.15 to 2.45, there is a money course at Bookham Baptist Church. It's to help you manage your money better and learn to budget, save, and spend well. It's a three-part course, and it's on the 23rd of May, 6th of June, and the 20th of June. And you need to book your free space either by phoning or contacting Book and Baptist. The details are on the sheet. Wednesday, the 31st of May, at 2 o'clock, will be a joint Golden Years meeting and the speaker will be from Mission Aviation Fellowship, and all are welcome. Volunteers are needed. The Anna Chaplaincy will be running another holiday at home. They did this last year for the first time, and they're doing it again, and it's for over 70s in our local community. It's going to run for two days, Wednesday the 9th of August at the Baptist Church, and Wednesday the 23rd of August here. And more volunteers are needed who could offer to help set up and set down uh, on the evening before and at the end of the day. And people able to give a whole day to help to look after chat to people and be there. If volunteering isn't something you can do regularly, it is a one-off. So if you're interested, contact Anne the Anna Chaplin and again, the details are on the service sheet. Uh, the Meeting Place Charity, which encompasses the Saturday coffee shop, the community fridge, the Anna Chaplaincy, the language hub, the lip reading course and hearing champions, uh, are looking for trustees to support a team of six, which supports all the work above. And if you're aware of anyone who might have some of the skills needed, Please let Sue know, um, although she's not here this week, but she'll be here next week. Let her know and she'll pass it on. Uh, finally, um, if you look at the back of your notice sheet, for those of you who would like to pray for five people in our lives each day, that they will come to know Jesus. And now I'd like to introduce Andrew. very much Thank Gillian. Thank you for the lovely, the huge amount of information that you managed to get out very quickly and easily there. Um, this morning I'm going to talk to you about faith and we're going to have a few other people talk to you as well today. We have um, Anne who's come to talk to us about the uh, Bookham Youth Project and we also have Jenny, my wife, who's going to be reading a poem at the end and she's actually going to speak to us all a little bit as our introduction. She's going to talk to us about faith. And as I said, faith is our subject. Faith is one of those things that so often we can place in this sort of magical space. Oh yes, faith. It's just it's up there somewhere. I keep it on my bookshelf. And I take it out occasionally, and then I put it back, and then I take it out. Well, faith is for every day, and all the time. And Jenny had an experience recently, um, which, uh, which I'm just going to give a bit of a background uh, talk for Jenny, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so Jenny loves to cycle. Jenny and I have cycled to Paris before. Some of you have heard us talk about that. Um, in fact, when we were dating... We did the London to Brighton night cycle and learned how not to encourage one another. Um, uh, but Jenny, while training for our cycle to Paris, was actually knocked off her bike by a car. So I want you to bear that in mind. It was very slow speed, and obviously she was fine. Um, but I want you to bear that in mind as she talks to you now about what God was saying to her as she was talking to him in the morning. I'm not sure I was talking to him, but he certainly spoke to me. Um, 
So it's, it's been a funny old week. I was chatting to Mum and Andrew about this yesterday and kind of trying to get my thoughts in, in order. And um, basically, Archie was sick on Monday morning and it just threw my whole week and, you know, I was just having a bit of a kind of week. And I was saying to Andrew, you know, if God had spoken to me on Monday morning, he'd have got a very different answer than he did on Friday morning. Um, so thank goodness for his patience. But I was drip-fed little bits throughout my week. So on Tuesday... Um, I went back into school and one of the children had brought a diary entry from what they'd done on the weekend. And most of it was, you know, we went to the park, we had this, we did that, it was lovely. But the last line of it that the parent wrote in was, this is a picture of us and our friends at Kids Church and we learnt about how not to fear. And I was like, okay, God, fine, lovely, thank you. So that was kind of my first bit of, a bit of drip feed. Um, and then... I was just kind of getting back on track and, and having a better week as the week went on. And um, I challenged myself. I was like, okay, I need, need to do some fitness. Need to get back out there. And um, I've before, I've cycled to, to school. And there's an easy way that avoids all the traffic. Um, but I never should get lost. <laughs> because you kind of go all the back ways. But it avoids all the traffic, so in my head, I'm like, that's better. We'll go with that, because like Andrew said, I got smacked off my bike. The woman was doing two miles an hour, and I was covered in bruises. And ever since then, I've sort of avoided traffic. Um, but on my way to work, so I got myself all ready, had my helmet, had my gear and everything, and I was cycling to work, and I have to go around this big roundabout, and then I can come off. Um, but between me and work, there's about four miles of dual carriageway. And every time we see anyone on that dual carriageway cycling, we're like, they're mad. Why would you do that? It's not fun. Lorries are doing like 70 miles an hour. So anyway, joys of the Holy Spirit. I was on the roundabout and he just went, go straight, go on the motor, go on the dual carriageway. I've got you. Uh, are you sure? Because <laughs> in my mind, no way. That, that is not a sensible thing to do. I don't want to do this. But I was like, okay, you're asking me to trust you. We've been talking about faith all week. You've asked me not to fear. I'm going to do it. Okay. So I did. Um, and there were lorries hurtling past me at 70 miles an hour. And th there's not really a cycle path. It's kind of, you've got about this much between you and, and, a, and a big lorry or the trees. So, inevitably, I got scratched by a few trees, but that's preferable. Um, but while I was cycling and, you know, going on faith that God had me, I also thought several times I could have gone off on the safe direction. There were several um, left-hand turnings that would have taken me on the back roads, but they would have been much calmer, much quieter. But that wasn't the way God was asking me to go. So he was like, you can have a get out, but I'm asking you to go straight. And I went straight, and I was fine, obviously. Got to work absolutely pumped because I'd done what God asked me to do, and I'd got where I was going, and I smashed it in half an hour. And, yeah, in my own right, in my own strength, there's absolutely no way I would ever have done that journey because I'd have been terrified. Um, but God led me. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really scary sometimes when he says, go this way. But actually, if, if God is prompting us to go the direct way and he gets us where we're going, wow, what an opportunity. So, yeah, take that step of faith. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. So, as Jenny said, you know, she had lots of opportunities to take other routes. And we have that in our lives all the time. We all have options. God, while he wants us to go one way, will allow us to go our own way. Sometimes, if we're a true follower of God, he might put you in the belly of a whale to drag you back on track. <laughs> let's not do that. Um, but let's go the way that he wants us to go and step out in faith. So with that in mind, I'd like us to sing our first song, When the Music Fades, which is from Mission Praise 1016. 
and the words will be on the screen. And I forgot to welcome everyone online, so welcome. Chantelle is enjoying a well-earned morning off, so um, it'll be guitar this morning, but I'm sure we'll manage. So if you'd like to stand and sing, uh, when the music fades, all is stripped away, Jesus has left. Search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it, but it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back. worship team. Right, and now I would like to welcome Anne Chamberlain, who's going to talk to us about the Bookham Youth Project, which is also part of the Leatherhead Youth Project. Come on down, Anne. Um, I've left the microphone down at your level, yeah. and my wife's level. So. That sounds fine. Thank you very much. <coughs> Do you need me to click through slides? Um, I th there's one or two up there. Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning. Thank you for inviting me to your church. Um, my main purpose in being here today is to say a huge thank you to you all for supporting Bookham Youth Project and LYP and for believing in us. I don't think you can have any idea how important that is to us. It's one thing to have a vision and a passion, but if people don't come along with you, especially in your community, then really you're shouting in the darkness by yourself. So firstly, thank you so very, very much for your continued encouragement and support. Financially, although we can bid for money for projects, which we do for all kinds of different sources, what we need more than anything is money to pay the staff. And a lot of the bids that we put in won't pay for that. They'll pay for a particular project but they won't give us the core funding to pay the staff. Um, and that's really important. It, it's an act of faith on the part of our workers 
to work for a charity when we have no guaranteed funding. So the security which comes from contributions from the churches in Bookham is nothing short of wonderful. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, for 35 years, I worked as a child protection social worker for Essex County Council. My last post for 15 years was a, as a manager of a local authority family centre undertaking assessments for the courts on very high risk child protection cases, but also providing therapeutic work for children, parents and families to promote positive change. After I retired, I moved to Surrey in 2016, intending to do nothing, as we all do. Uh, but someone invited me to LYP, and I was quite honestly amazed that such an exceptional project was on my doorstep. I was invited to become part of the Board of Trustees, and I've been the safeguarding lead for the past six years. I expect most of you know safeguarding is the child protection lead. I absolutely love the project and I'm very proud to be involved in it. So I want to talk to you today about what we call the continuum, really the philosophy behind what we do. It's about making relationships with young people in our community and enabling them to build healthy relationships with each other and to understand how to negotiate their way through the challenges of life but also how to believe in themselves and to reach higher, to step outside their comfort zone and try new things and become more aware of the needs and feelings of others. As an example, at Easter this year, we took 23 young people away for three days to a place called Juniper Hall, which is a field studies accommodation facility. <clears throat> Those three days were packed with activities and chances to explore the amazing Surrey Hills. They had a tremendous time, but underneath all that, they built self-confidence, self-esteem, and trust in our workers. Um, another example during the February half term was our Making Good project, which was at East Horsley Place Estate with Surrey Hills Society. Our young people were human beavers for the day, making leaky dams to support ancient woodland. Obviously, a lot of learning for them in that as well. Their hard work was rewarded by a trip to Coral Reef Waterworld. <clears throat> and that's obviously on top of the everyday youth work uh, that happens in LYP, which is five days a week, and B Youth, which is two days a week, plus other extras. But it isn't all fun and joy, far from it. The pressures of social media and unhealthy influences are all around them and really quite bewildering at times. I think most of us can just about remember back to both happy but also painful memories of our teenage years. Unkindness, bullying, fallouts with friends, Times of anxiety when our self-confidence failed us and even supportive parents couldn't help us. Challenges with life events, family difficulties, loss perhaps. It's no secret that in this day and age there are added pressures from mobile phones, social media, unrealistic images of how we look and lifestyle which can affect us as adults. But those pressures are intensified for young people and they can often become really overwhelming. Even young people from a really happy, stable home with no issues of neglect or poverty can benefit hugely from having a local youth club which is a safe space separate from school and home to have fun with friends but under the supervision of skilled youth workers. But for young people from a de deprived background, it is literally a lifeline to have a place to take their troubles. Somewhere to receive support and encouragement, to overcome barriers, develop skills and build confidence towards a brighter future for themselves. The fact that it is free 
if you think how much the simplest activity is around here and staffed by trustworthy, experienced, but young, fun youth workers with between them over 64 years of experience is frankly extraordinary. LYP provide both key work and counselling. Again, this is free. I don't know if you know, but the wait for the service, the National Health Service, mental health service around here with CAMS, can be years, literally, certainly months. And that's just too long. It's too long for children in trouble to wait. So at LYP, and for youth the same, young people aged between 11 and 17 who've been identified through our community youth work as needing some extra help can be given one-to-one -one support from a youth worker for as long as they need it. It might be a few sessions, it might be for several months. The fact that a young person can move seamlessly within the same building and the same project to receive this extra support with no fuss, no stigma, makes a very big difference to their willingness to accept and engage in support. Because they already have a relationship with us, many young people are identified at critical times in their lives and can be assisted from becoming more troubled. I cannot stress how incredibly lucky we are to have this service available here, right on our doorstep, in our own community, and by people they already know and trust. It's very rare, looking across from my experience, looking across what's available in other counties, in other communities, it's really, really unusual to find it. Um, I think the fact, as I say, that they already know their project increases the positive impact. LYP are unusual in that when we provide formal counselling, we only imply, employ qualified counsellors, unlike many other services who employ people who are very willing to help but don't actually have the training, qualifications and experience. So if key work from a youth worker is not enough, the counselling and emotional wellbeing team provide an early intervention for young people with more serious and entrenched problems. In many, but not all cases, this can give them the skilled therapeutic help they need, rather than having to refer them on to a more specialist service. Issues young people bring to counselling include bullying, eating disorders, worry about sexual identity, anxiety and depression, self-harm, bereavement or stress stressful family relationships all the way through to young people who are adversely affected by living with parents with all sorts of their own problems, as you imagine. Drugs, mental health, alcohol, all kinds of things. Our counsellors are often the first person a teenager chooses to disclose their child protection concerns to, from neglect to physical, emotional or sexual abuse. We have all of those. The risk factors we are faced with can range from minor to very serious indeed, such as young people feeling hopeless and suicidal. The counsellors are trained to keep the young person safe and they know when external services must step up and take action. Um, you might think this isn't happening very much here in this community, but I can assure you it is. These are troubled times, especially for the poor, and there are dangers out there for young people. But I want to leave you with some good news. Both LYP and Be Youth are thriving, and the demand for our services continues to increase. The young people themselves have come up with a fun day on Wednesday the 31st of May. I've got a thing for it here somewhere, which I'll leave out. Um, they've developed it all themselves, and it's going to be at All Saints Church. Um, it's in the half-term holiday from 11 to 11.30 till 3. It's free, but obviously they're hoping that you're going to spend a bit of money there. Um, there will be games, a raffle, tombola, cakes, and I would urge you to come along and bring your family if you can. 
Um, it will be only cash on the day, no cards. So that's really a little rundown of what you are contributing to. And I, I guess I want to go back to where I started to say, you know, I rec we recognise that you're a small church and for you to support us means a lot. So thank you very much indeed for the support you give us. In June, we have our youth board, another Making Good project, and another Into the Wild experience. We would love for you to pray for all of those projects, for the Leatherhead Youth Project team, especially Jenny, your lead youth worker in Bookham, and of course for the new youth centre that we're all keeping our fingers crossed for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I may have done things out of order slightly today um, and missed our prayers. I don't know how I did that. So, um, and the other thing which I needed to say was that there is a sign-up sheet with Nick. If you want updates on the Bookham Youth Project, um, he can take your details and get you, the, um, get you signed up for the uh, Bookham Youth Project information. Um, have you got the clicker, Nick? We just click back to the pr prayer slide. There we go. And then we'll have the Lord's Prayer in a second. So I'll first of all pray for us. Um, in fact, as we've just had the uh, Bookham and Leatherhead Youth Project update, I'd like to start by praying for them. Lord, first of all, I want to pray for the workers, the volunteers, and all the people that make it happen. Lord, I thank you for their faith, for their trust in people like us and their trust in you, Lord, that they will be funded. And I thank you that you are faithful and that you will come through for them. And Lord, I pray for the young people that as they come through their doors that they will just feel the love that is there for them. And Lord, I pray that they may get to know that that love is through you. In good time, Lord. Lord, we live in a beautiful area, in a wonderful place, a happy place, a peaceful place, a calm and quiet place. Yet, as we heard, there are things that we don't know about that are going on. And sometimes those things reach the surface. We pray for our police and our community police officers. Uh, we remember Marion Hawkins recently, who's had to deal with um, some serious assaults in the village. Lord, Whatever's going on behind this, we pray for the shopkeepers that they may be kept safe. And Lord, we pray for whoever's causing this trouble, that they may be reached, that perhaps the future generations that might cause this trouble are reached by projects like Bookham Youth Project and Leatherhead Youth Project. That they're counselled early on and they don't take their anger out on those around them. That they understand love and compassion and peace. Lord, help us when we see things going on, not to see them through human eyes, but to see them through yours, God to see through problems and to understand that there is more to it. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the wonderful love in this congregation. I thank you that we are a welcoming and friendly con congregation. Lord, help us to, to meet people's needs even if it's not physically ourselves, help us to do it through the blessings we have been given. 
Thank you, Lord. And now I pray our Lord's Prayer all together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we're back in sequence, and we can have our next hymn, Beauty for Brokenness. And then we'll have our reading straight after that, Sylvia. Um, it's the Hughes Buchanan show today with Anne Chamberlain chiming in as well. Um, so thank you very much.
The reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. And this can be found on page 1220 in the Church Bibles. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Faith that lasts. That's what we all want, isn't it? Well, I hope that's what we all want in this room. Faith that lasts. Although I didn't realise Sylvia was reaching for her glass just then, and I didn't have faith that she'd remember to come straight up. <laughs> so I apologise, Sylvia. What is faith to you? We looked a little bit at faith earlier with Jenny, and we looked at what it was to her in that moment. And I said about, you know, sometimes we like to have faith and we sort of take it out of our bookshelf and we put it back. And I hope you can forgive me for that analogy, but I think if we're all very, very honest, whether we're there at the moment, we've all been there at some point in our lives. Very few of us have that amazing faith straight from the offset. And some of us, even if we did have that amazing faith straight from the offset, the trials of life can sometimes rock it and we might end up putting it back on the bookshelf. So, I don't want answers from you out loud today. I just want you to think about these things. What do you put your faith in? In science, people, or God? Everyone's thinking, I know the answer to this one. An airline pilot puts his faith in the science that holds his aircraft in the sky. Is that wrong? No. I put my faith every day in the fact that gravity is going to stay pretty much the same the whole time. It's not suddenly going to be times by 10 and crush me to on the ground. And equally, it's not going to suddenly disappear to almost nothing and the oxygen I require to breathe is going to vanish into outer space. These are things which I take for granted that I have faith in. I love this picture. I like pictures of people being friendly and hugging. And to be honest, it's quite hard to find a picture of boys doing this. I'll be honest as a man or a boy myself, there are times when we do this. It's normally on a sports pitch or something like that, or in secret, that we sort of will put our arm around each other. As we grow older, we seem to lose our inhibitions, and you might see men hugging from time to time. But these girls are showing love and kindness, and they have faith and trust in each other. 
They trust in their friendship. They have faith in their friendship. Is that wrong? No. God. Should we have faith in God? Well, if we believe in God, then yes. But sometimes it's hard to believe in things we can't see. In the world every day, particularly on a day like today, we can feel the effects of things that we can't physically see. We go out and we can't see the rays of light literally hitting our skin, but we can feel the warmth on our skin. We know it's light, but it's light every day, pretty much, especially now we've come out of the dark, dark winter. But we can feel that warmth of the sun radiating on our skin. It's glorious and wonderful. And the same for God. As we get to know God, we can feel his love radiating the warmth within us. That love within us. My next question. I've talked about the sort of the faith that we have for God. I've challenged you with this concept of faith and the different aspects of faith. And now I'm going to ask you a more difficult question. Are we faithful to God? What do I mean by that? Well, we understand being faithful to our friends, our spouse or our partner. It's being there for them. But do we need to be there for God in the same way? Are they, is God dependent on us in the same way as this lady is dependent on her husband or her son walking her along the road? No, God doesn't need us to hold him up. But God does require us to be faithful to him. So now that we've covered this concept a little bit of being faithful to God, are there other areas that we think of in our lives that we might be unfaithful to God. My subject today is faith that lasts. If you want a marriage to last, you have to be faithful. No two ways about it, you have to be faithful. Is a marriage easy all the time? If you put your hands up, terribly sorry, you're going to know that you're probably lying. I am married, <laughs> and my wife's there, and I love her dearly. She would be the last person to put her hand up. She's married to me. It's not easy. But we have to be faithful to each other. We have to have trust. We have to trust each other. Is it faithfulness just about looking at other women? Is it just about being distracted? Or is there more to it? Is there more to being faithful to your partner? Is it about doing things as well? Is it about communicating and talking? Is it about being in true relationship with your wife or partner? Now it gets a bit more challenging. It's quite easy to enter in on one level, but as I start to peel the layers away and we look at the more challenging areas of marriage, of, of relationship, of peeling back and saying, oh, am I doing that? Am I listening? Do I always listen to my wife? Um, I try to, is the answer. And we try 
We work on our communication with each other. It's something that Jenny is better at than me. I often joke that men are so good about talking about their feelings. I love talking about my feelings. Do not like talking about my feelings. But we need to. So now, are we faithful to God? Blank expression comes across some of our faces, maybe mine as well sometimes. So, we've heard this scripture. And when you hear the scripture that was read, you may not straight away think of it as a scripture all about faith. There is faith mentioned in it, but is it all about faith and being faithful to God? And there are other aspects that I'm not going to mention today that I'm going to miss. There always are, because I only have a short amount of time for my sermons. They won't let me do three-hour sermons for you. <laughs> Everyone sighs a big sigh of relief as I look at the clock. So, what is it to be faithful to God? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Humble ourselves before him. Come to God without our pride in the way. Be real. And I apologize for this. I'm not going to preach naked. I'm not Isaiah. Never going to happen. Um, until I am clothed in glory and I won't be on this mortal earth. So you're safe. Be real and naked, exposed before God. Don't try to hide anything. Just be honest. I would say that just like a marriage, just like a relationship, just like a friendship, we need to be honest, exposed before our God. Does he want that? Well, the next verse tells us that he does because it says, cast all. Everyone say all. All. Does he mean all? Yeah. Does he say all the good stuff? No. All your anxiety. What's our anxiety? Go on. Worry, rubbish, the stuff that's just dragging us down in life. It's not the good stuff. Cast all of that on him because what? He cares for you. Can everyone say together? He cares for you. If you remember one thing from this service today, I want it to be that God cares for you. Can we all say, God cares for me? There we go. God cares for me. God cares for you. Every one of you. Okay? If you remember nothing else, I don't mind. Just that. That would be amazing. Talk to God about everything that is on your heart. Share with God what is on your heart. God cares and wants you to talk to him. I put this quote by Margaret Feenberg, um, and I apologize if I pronounced her name wrong, but uh, prayer might not change things, but it will change my perspective on things. Prayer might not change the past, but inevitably it changes the present. Talking to God is prayer. But we don't have to come to God just at church or just in a specific way. When we talk to God, just talk to him. Express your love to him. He will meet you where you are at he has just said he cares for you be alert and of sober mind now I've broken this scripture this part of the scripture into the sections and you'll see why in a moment 
be alert and of sober mind. In order to do this, you need to take care of yourself, be rested and ready. Okay? We need to look after ourselves. Some of us are so busy running around looking after everyone else that we can get totally worn out. And when we do that, we aren't alone and we're not of sober mind. We're not where God wants us to be. We're not in the best place we can be. So please look after yourselves. Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Ignore the loud and unimportant noises going on all around you. Resist their call and keep your focus on God. Resist him and stand firm in the faith. Standing firm in the faith is keeping our focus on what's important. A pilot flying through a storm needs to keep his eye on his instruments to know where he is at. He can't necessarily see what is going on around him. He needs to trust in his instruments to know which way his plane is pointing. I've flown a plane. I loved it. It was a great experience and a terrifying experience. I had my wife and son in it while I'm learning to fly this plane. <laughs> you know, no pressure at all. <laughs> and when you fly, you can feel that you're level. But the plane is doing that. It's going down. Or it's climbing up, 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 too high. Down a bit, left a bit, right a bit. We need to keep our eyes on what's important. When we're rested, when we're in a place where we're looking after ourselves, it gives us a chance to do that, to ignore the loud and unimportant noises going on all around you. Because that is the devil, just trying to pull your attention from one way to the other way. We heard Anne talking about these young people who are bombarded by stuff. We're all bombarded by it. I turn my computer on at work, and annoyingly, they have this thing, and it, it opens up, and it doesn't open up like Google opens up. I apologize for the advertising for Google, but it doesn't open up like Google, where it just gives me a line and says, you know, enter what you're searching for there. No, there's a million and one things, it seems like, on this page flashing at me, to look at, to distract me from what I'm doing. Do I ever get distracted by it? Yes, I do. I try not to, and I get so frustrated when I do because you can get so easily distracted by these things. You can think they're important, but they're not. Keep your focus. So... Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. Know that you are not alone. You are part of God's own family. In the noise and confusion, we can often feel alone. However, that's what the tempter wants you to feel disconnected, when in fact it is quite the opposite. <clears throat> Although you may not be physically see them, there is a family standing with you and praying with you and for you. You are part of God's family. You're not alone. That is the lie that is the deception that the devil wants you to have. You might be physically alone. You might be 
thousands of miles away from anyone you know, I can promise you there are believers, even if they're not physically there near you, they will be praying for you because God will call someone to pray for you. We are part of God's family. Not just in this church, not just in Bookham, not just in England. It's a worldwide family. People everywhere who will love you just because you love their God, our God. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Live in the knowledge that God himself will restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Steadfast. Hmm. It's not a common word, so I put a, a definition here for it. And this is the adjective of steadfast. Um, firm in belief, determination, or allegiance. Firm in belief, firm in determination, allied with God, allegiance, in line with. So what is it to be faithful to God? It's humbling ourselves before him. It's talking to God about things that are on our hearts, taking care of yourself, being rested and ready. Ignore the loud, unimportant noises that go on all around you and resist their call. That we keep our focus on God knowing that you're not alone and you are part of God's own family, live in the knowledge that God himself will restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Because he cares for you. And now... I'd like to just pray all together and I'm going to put the words up on the screen and this is the full verse, the, the full section of scripture which is a prayer to the elders among us but we are all called to be servants of God and elders are just servants of God yes Nick, me, Liz and Sylvia are all elders and Gillian um, serving at the moment in the church. But we are all called and we all serve in this church. From just saying hello to someone and asking how they are, you are serving God's purpose in this church. Because that's showing God's love. So when we pray... Don't think it's just for the elders, it's for all of us here. Okay? So we're going to pray together. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and as a witness of Christ's sufferings who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that it is under your care. Watch over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to, as pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording over those you entrusted to you, but examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears to you, will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you, close yourselves with humility towards one another because humble... Oh, sorry. I don't know why. I've missed off some words there. Um, 
It's on your screen, but not on mine. Um, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for bearing with me reading that through with you all. I just believe that we need to understand what we're reading. We need to know this word and it needs to speak to us. So, are we faithful to God and do we know how to be faithful to God? Hopefully. And what was the one thing I asked you to all remember? He cares for you. Yes. Thank you. And now we have our last song, and then we'll have Jenny come up to read us a poem about faith in our time of reflection. It is in pardoning 
this life. Faith is hope. Hope is love. And love is faith. We have faith for the things unseen. We believe in a higher calling. When circumstances look bleak, we look to previous triumphs and remember his grace and mercy. Faith guides us through. Faith is for the tough times. To depend on when we can't see a way through. God sees the whole picture, whereas we only see glimpses. Everyone struggles with faith at some point in their life, but trials make us stronger and remind us that God is there for us. We may not understand his timings or actions, but he is for us, not against us. Sometimes we need to be pruned to flourish. Sometimes we need to be still to hear. Give God your plans and see what he does with them. Often just an idea is enough to get us moving in the right direction. We take the steps and God puts the plan in place. Have faith in his eternal plans and thank God for his salvation. Thank you, Jenny. Apologise. There we go. And now I'd like to just read the Lord's blessing from Numbers for you. So this is in uh, Numbers six twenty four. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. These are God's words to his family, to his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God cares for you. And now, as we close the service, we will share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Can, can you forgive me? Can we start again? And can we, should we all stand up? Let's, let's just... The great thing is when we're in church and we mess up, we know that you have to be forgiven. So that is the wonderful thing. Right, let's try again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I think I've done enough reading for today, and I should just do things by memory now. Okay, should we all share some love together physically with some teas and coffees out in the foyer? Thank you so much for coming, and God bless you all. Amen.